Welcome to Palcast, your creator national podcast. Network News, Episode 91. Welcome, GNN fans, to another episode of God Network News, the podcast that tells you what God's doing around the world, not what CNN tells you, but what GNN tells you is going on in the world. If you're tired of listening to all of that crisis network news and you want to hear what God's doing, well, give us a listen. Welcome once again, God Network News fans, to another episode that is part of a new series that my wife and I were able to record and interview some incredible stories from the Middle East. We were able to meet with several workers uh, doing church planting work in the region and just ministering to people. And wow, what amazing things that God is doing amongst Arabs in the Middle East. It's incredible. And I want to bring this to you as a series so the the next 12 episodes will be testimonies from these uh, incredible workers that are doing amazing miracles through the power of God as they pray for people's needs and seeing people come to Christ. So without further ado, I want to launch right into the next episode in this wonderful set of stories. Hello again, God Network News fans. We are here in the Middle East with another exciting story from one of our heroes in the faith, Kate, and her team. Yes, (laughs) Kate is here to tell us another exciting story uh, that happened uh, with her and some of her team members uh, a little while ago, and it's just amazing, and it really glorifies God and shows how God is on the move in the Middle East. I uh, had a little thought before I share the story, which is for those of you that are interested in moving to the Middle East, what we are finding is God is so excited to move here that he's using all our little efforts. And this story to me is is one of those miraculous stories that just displays how little we have to do for him to radically, radically move. Um, so it's, it's not that hard. <laughs> and um, this story takes place a few years ago, and um, I was in a Muslim country. And, you know, sometimes you don't know how to necessarily reach out to the people. You can't stand on the street corner and just blare the Bible. You have to really just, in conversation with people, love them and talk about the wonderful man of Jesus. And so what we would often do when we would take trips to the Middle East was we'd lay out a map And we would just go to all the main tourist attractions because we figure that's where the people are. That's where the foreigners are. And it would be normal for us to be there. And it's been so fun. I mean, just going all over the Middle East and visiting tourist attractions and loving people. So Sounds like fun. (laughs) It's really fun. (laughs) Can I join your team? That's great. (laughs) Yes, you and thousands of other people. (laughs) (laughs) Good. (laughs) Um, so we were out one day and we decided to go and visit this really famous outdoor market and we piled up a bunch of friends in a minivan and I grabbed two of my friends that spoke Arabic and I said, why don't you come be our translators? Cause let's go out really far into some small villages. And so we did, and we went out again to this famous market and we got there and we were walking around and, you know, you just kind of have that sense like God's taking us further in. And so we asked around, is there anything else that's a tourist attraction in this area? And everyone kept saying there's a famous castle. Go another 30 minutes in. So we pile back into the minivan. 
and we drive out again to middle of nowhere, middle of the desert. We come to this huge old castle and we get out of the car and these five local girls approach us and they actually spoke a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of English and we just kind of pounce on them. Mm -hmm. There was about seven, eight or so of us and we just kind of spread out talking to these five local girls and we're using, I'm, I have my friend who speaks Arabic and these local girls are using the tiny bit of English that they have and we just have simple conversation. What's your name? Where are you from? How old are you? And my friend and I, her name's Cookie, and we're chatting with two of these girls and we realize they're all sisters, all five of them. And as we're chatting, only one of the sisters is responding to me and the other one is really quiet. And so I say, why doesn't your other sister respond? Does she not speak any English? Does she not understand what's going on? And she says, no, my sister is mute. And I say, I'm so sorry. Has she been mute for a long time? Was she born this way? And the sister says, she kind of leans in and she says, our oldest sister was jealous of our younger sister and she cursed her and she became mute. Mm. And this is really common for this area, actually. Mm. It's tons of witchcraft in this particular part wow. of the country. So I kind of give the side glance to my friend Cookie, like, are we going to do something about this? And we just go for it. And I say, well, we are followers of Jesus. And it is written in the holy book that his name is so powerful that it can break any curse. Can we pray for your sister in the name of Jesus and ask for him to break the curse of your sister being mute? And she says, this is impossible. No, 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 no. And we say, come on, come on, why not? She says, no, no, no. Well, we spend a little bit of time arguing back and forth. Finally, she says, okay, you can pray for her. And I say, okay, listen, I'm not gonna do anything crazy. Your sister never has to know that we're praying for this youngest sister. We'll just do it really quickly. So I have to be honest and say, I don't remember. I don't remember if I uttered a tiny short prayer. If it, I don't even know if I got into anything, but we did offer a tiny prayer and the oldest sister must have sensed that something was going on. She sees us from across the, the, the parking lot and she comes over and she breaks everyone up. She's yelling in Arabic to her sisters. And me and Cookie kind of moonwalk out of the situation. Yeah. I gather up our other friends that are there and we're like, let's, it's time to go. Let's go into the castle. So we start heading into the castle. And oddly, we turn around and these five sisters are following us and they say, we want to go to the castle with you. And so I thought we had definitely made things too awkward, but apparently not. So all of us, I mean, again, like maybe seven or eight of us, and then these five sisters we go into the castle and we explore this castle together for like two hours. It was so much fun. It was this old, I mean, it was probably 700 year old castle that had mm. trap doors, towers, date cellars, you know, mm. I mean, it was awesome. Cool. We played like hide and go seek with them in this castle. We, we didn't have enough language to do anything else except play games, but we had a blast. The sun starts setting and we tell them we have to go home. So we say goodbye. And, and me and my friends, we pile back into our minivan and we're driving back home and everyone kind of says the same thing. That was a really fun afternoon, but I just had a sense that God wanted to do more. Mm -hmm. And we just kind of felt a little dissatisfied, but yeah. again, we had, we had a ton of fun. Well, one year later, I return to the same country and I call up my friend Cookie and I'm like, hey, I'm in town, let's get together. So we meet up for brunch and she says, I have had the most crazy thing to tell you, but it's so sensitive. I can't write it out in an email to you because I'm afraid that it will get read, you mm -hmm. know, by the wrong yeah. pair of eyes. Yeah. And I don't want to get us in trouble. Yeah. And I say, okay. So she starts to tell me what has happened, what has transpired in the last year since I've seen her. She says, two months ago, I got a phone call at five o'clock in the morning. And she says, I never would answer my phone calls at that hour. Mm -hmm. But for some reason I answered this one. So on the other end of the phone is this woman and she's speaking Arabic and she has this really raspy voice and she's urgently crying out, is this biscuit with Kate, biscuit with Kate. And my friend is like, I don't know what you're talking about. You have the wrong number. But the other woman's so insistent on the other end of the phone. She says, no, 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 no. Is this biscuit with Kate, biscuit with Kate. Well, they go back and forth for a little, for a little while. And finally, my friend realizes cookie, biscuit, 
she realizes that oh, this woman is second. asking, yes, yeah. for a cookie so she's and, used and the me. the British term for cookie. Exactly. Yeah. And so my friend Cookie says, wait, wait, yes, I am Biscuit with Kate. Well, the other woman on the fo- on the other line says, you prayed for me at this castle. And the day when you prayed for me, a burning fire came into my throat and I was able to speak. Wow. She says, also this day, a spirit came into my spirit and started talking to me. So I started asking the spirit, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Day after day. Hmm. She says, well, I had a dream. And in the dream one night, the spirit says, I will tell you who I am. Go to your Filipino servant. So a lot of the local people have a lot of house help. Right, right. And a lot of them are from the Philippines. So she goes to her Filipino house servant and she, she explains the whole situation. Yeah. Who is the spirit living inside of me? The Filipino woman starts to tell her the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, wow. starts to teach her Tagalog, starts and gives her her Filipino Bible oh so that goodness. this local girl can read oh about goodness. the story of Jesus. <clears throat> so this local girl's on the phone and she says, then two weeks ago, I had another dream. And in this dream, the same spirit gives me the words Biscuit and Kate and gives me this phone number. Oh my God. She says, my father is at his early morning prayer. I have come down into the town square to call you from the payphone. He's going to return home soon. I have to go click. And hangs up. Hangs up oh the phone. Gosh. There's no way to track her back. Everything, it ends right there. My friend starts weeping in her room just crying out, thank you, God, for moving in such this crazy Mm. way. Well, she's telling me we're having brunch. I'm in this restaurant. I'm sobbing hysterically. And as you can imagine, I'm touched because one, how in the world am I hearing the end of this story? Or not even the end of her story, but another incredible moment in this girl's story. And I'm crying as well because I'm like, God, we didn't do anything special that day. Mm. I can't even remember the prayer we prayed, but he moved so supernaturally in this moment that what I thought is there is a local girl somewhere out in the desert who is communing with the Holy Spirit, Mm -hmm. who is learning the Bible and learning who Jesus is. And all we did really was just say hi. Yeah. And so I've, this story has been a constant reminder of like, man, in these moments when I feel so discouraged with you know, meetup after meetup that I'm having with my friend, I'm like, I don't even know what's supernaturally always going on behind those moments. And it's encouraging. Yeah, it's awesome because, I mean, that again is just another great example of being radically obedient to the Lord and just doing what you're able to do. And even a small thing, like you say, God loves these people so much He's willing to take our small efforts, yeah. whatever they are, yeah, yeah. and just multiply it, do something supernatural. And you don't know how many times you may have shared the the gospel with someone who will become another Saul or Paul, you know, or some amazing yeah. person that, yeah. that leads multitudes yeah. to the Lord, you know. Yeah. And uh, so this is just amazing and another incredible story that I want uh, our our fans, our audience to hear and to just give glory to God, uh, what he's doing in the Middle East. And I just want to encourage uh, God Network News fans and any others that you might know that are interested, have an interest, or God speaking and calling them. They know they have a calling to the Middle East. They know they have a calling to the Muslim world. Well, God is moving in powerful ways, and he can use you no matter who you are. He's looking for availability, not ability. Yes. He doesn't care if you can play the guitar or sing great or whatever. He just wants you to say, okay, Lord, here I am. Uh, You know, send me, use me, and he'll do it. Thank you, Kate, uh, for another wonderful story. Yes. And we hope to hear some more great stories from you in the future. So. Yes, and check out down in the podcast details how to get in touch with us. If you've loved these stories feel free to get in touch with us. That's right. And all of our podcasts we're going to uh, have in the show notes how you can contact these wonderful people and become a part of their team or just learn more about opportunities in the Middle East here to serve the Lord. Thank you so much again, Kate. Thank you so much.